Jess, hi. Um, welcome to uh, my uh, YouTube video part two. Uh, there has been a lot of interest uh, with respect to the first video that I shot and uh, what part you uh, had in this, uh, uh, what was said to you when you were uh, driving the truck. Uh, so a lot of people had a lot, a lot of questions about uh, you and uh, what you uh, may have said to uh, the agents at this uh, border stop. I'm going to ask you today uh, to give me your version of events. Before I get into that, I just want to ask you a little bit about yourself. Uh, what are you currently doing? And uh, uh, tell us a little bit about your uh, past experience. My name is Jesse Torres, and I hold a private investigation and security guard agency license in the state of Arizona. Uh, under the private investigation side, I do defense work. I also do expert witness testimony as far as police misconduct cases. Um, my prior experience is law enforcement, nine years with the state of Arizona, Department of Public Safety, and one year with the city of Scottsdale here in Arizona. So you were a, a, a DPS trooper? Yes, at the time, uh, that's, a new, uh, that's a new name for him, but at the time it was uh, Arizona Highway Patrol. Okay, and that's how we met. You were stationed out of Quartzsite, Arizona? That's correct, and you were a prosecutor in Parker, which fell within the same area for me. And we worked cases t together, correct? That's correct. You, uh, I arrested people and you prosecuted them. I put them in jail. That's correct. All right. Now, um, you were my investigator, and we had gone into Gallus, Arizona. We never crossed the border, but we went there to, to interview some agents of Homeland Security. Do, do you recall that? That's Yes, I do. I was your uh, investigator on that case, and uh, ultimately we ended up getting a very good um, deal for the plaintiff or defendant in that case. Okay. Uh, we were able to show that uh, the, the client wasn't uh, guilty as charged. That's correct. All right. So we were coming back, and uh, we saw this... Uh, 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 this border stop, uh, but in all actuality, we, we were about what, about uh, 20 plus miles from the actual border, is that correct? Yes, we were at least 20 miles from the city of Nogales, Arizona. So, so this wasn't an actual international border? No, we were far from the international border. All right, and so we're driving, mind your own business, and we come up to this stop. Could you just tell our viewers, uh, from your perspective, what, what occurred? Well, these stops are made, especially in Arizona, I'm very familiar with them. These border crossing stops are there so that they can monitor uh, illegal drug flow coming in and out on the state routes and highways. Are, are they really looking for illegals or are they looking for drugs? No, that's a ruse so that they can uh, have these types of funnels for people to stop them, have the canine run past their vehicles, uh, have them look at the people to see if they're carrying any contraband. All right. Now, when we were stopped, uh, one of the agents asked you if you were a U.S. citizen. That's correct. And you had no problem telling, telling them you were a U.S. citizen? That's correct. Okay. Did you know that I was going to refuse to answer? No, I did not. So this came as a total shock to you? It came as a surprise to me, yes. Okay. And, and we weren't planning to do a YouTube video, were we? No, we were on our way back from a long day of interviews with uh, Homeland Security. Um, we had traveled early in the morning to get there to do these interviews. And I believe we did three or four that day. All right. Do you know what prompted me to begin to, to, to film? I believe it was when the initial officer uh, came to us and, and said that you had to answer those questions. And, and that's what really uh, ticked me off, correct? That's when you got your phone out and said, I can't believe that he just said, I have to answer his questions. Okay, so you were trained in the rights that people uh, as citizens have and the authority that you have as a, as a police officer in the state of Arizona, is that correct? That's correct. Okay, so what did you think about when this, this agent told me that I didn't have a Fifth Amendment right and that I had to answer his questions? Did you agree with that? No, I absolutely didn't agree with that and he was either stupid or, um, as many police officers do, um, don't know the law or was just lying. All right, so, uh, at that point, do you agree that I absolutely had a, uh, a right not to answer any questions? Yes, you did. All right. So um, the agent then uh, stopped us and, and began to question us. Uh, there were some uh, viewers that thought that maybe we should have just driven off. Uh, based on your experience, do you think that's a, that's a good thing to do when you're told to stop? No, when a law enforcement officer uh, tells you to stop, 
or it activates emergency lights, you must stop that vehicle. The only reason why we were allowed to leave that day is because neither one of us broke the law. So you don't think it's a good idea to drive off when they, when they tell you to stop? No. All right. So you think we use good judgment in, in, in stopping? I know we did use good judgment because there were several hunt, well, there were several people who drove off when I tried, told them to stop or tried to stop them and they were arrested for felonies in the state of Arizona. All right. We were then told to go to a secondary uh, stop where, where um, I, I was further uh, questioned or attempted to be questioned. There were some viewers that thought maybe, maybe we shouldn't have gone to the secondary. Uh, do you agree with that based on your experience? What do you think that they would have done if we refused that? They would have arrested me and that's what he was priming me for, saying that I was hindering the flow of traffic. They would have called a DPS a vehicle because Border Patrol is not allowed to or they are not certified to enforce traffic laws in the state of Arizona. And there's a case here where a uh, minister uh, would not move out of the traffic lane until he was told he could leave. They broke his window, drug him out, um, and he was arrested, charged with several felony counts, and ultimately got a civil verdict. But that was after going to the hospital, spending days in jail. Um, you always better to comply than to not, because if not, law enforcement will always win on the street. So you can um, orally voice your objection and telling, tell, tell them that you're doing it because you're being ordered, but you should physically comply. That's correct. All right. And if, had I uh, refused to get out of my truck, do, do you think it's a possibility that they could have uh, busted my window and, and drug me out of there? They, this would have escalated uh, a hundredfold had you not done what they verbally told you to do. And in fact, uh, the supervisor came over to tell you to get back in your vehicle and he was ready to grab you up. And that's when the other officer uh, said, no, 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 I told him to get out. And he started to acquiesce right away. They were looking for a reason to put their hands on you. All right, and I didn't give them one. That's correct. Okay, Jess, a lot of viewers uh, have this burning question. Uh, they wanna know, did you rat me out? And is that why, <laughs> that's why I was allowed to leave? What happened when they separate us, separated us? What did they tell you and what'd you tell them? They came over to my side of the vehicle, asked me what our relationship was. I said, it doesn't matter what our relationship was. I've already answered my question. I have nothing further to say. And then the a supervisor came over to my window and said, hey, what's going on here? I ran the plates, you guys didn't cross the border. And what I told him is I said, if your if you're reasonable suspicion to say whether somebody, or you're trying to determine that, that you can tell that the gentleman that you just spoke to is articulate, his command of the English language, he knows the law much better than your, um, your border patrol agents. So what makes you think that you even have reasonable suspicion he is not a U.S. citizen? I said, that makes no sense to me. And he said, you definitely don't have probable cause to arrest either one of us. You can do it, but you know, ultimately, years down the road, we will prevail. And that's when he realized that both of us knew the law. But no, I didn't give you up. I said, if you have business with him, then you have business with him. I wouldn't even uh, say who you were. I wouldn't identify you. Right on, brother. Uh, why do you think they uh, separated us? That's a common ploy with law enforcement because what they want to do is get different stories or see if one of us is willing to say something different. And then they go back to the other one and say, you lied. Um, and then they, again, they have, uh, you've broken the law. Uh, what, the, the, the young one with a beanie cap, he got right in the window um, and he was looking inside. What, what was he doing? What was, what was the purpose of him getting up into my window? He was trying to see or yeah, smell um, any type of odor that we were either one, you know, carrying marijuana, trying to look in the vehicle to see if we had any contraband at all. And that would have given them reasonable suspicion or probable cause to then search the vehicle. So they're, they're looking for a reason to, to get in my car. They're looking for a reason to get in your car. And at this point, they're looking for a reason to put their hands on you and put you in custody because you have challenged their authority. And they're not used to that. And they don't like that. Now, um, one of them asked me if I had a gun, which had absolutely nothing to do with a border stop to determine uh, my nationality. Why do you think he asked me if I had a gun? 
He was, if you would have said yes, or said you had any weapons on you, he would have then said for his protection, he was gonna do a Terry pat down search, which means that he can go over the clothes. They're looking for any reason at this point to justify their stop. So they could claim for officer safety purposes that both of us had to uh, get out of the truck and they're gonna conduct a search for the weapon. That's correct. And then we wouldn't have, if something was planted in the truck, if, uh, cause they would get in the vehicle by themselves, uh, if something was put in the car and contraband anything, then we would have no control over that. Okay. There was a guy in a lime green shirt there uh, with me uh, when I was sitting um, uh, under the, that little canopy. Uh, I had one commentator uh, uh, state that uh, he thought that uh, that might be an undercover cop. And, and uh, that struck me as a very good observation. Uh, you saw the video just now. W what do you think about that? I, yeah, he had definitely had something to do with law enforcement. Um, you know, they're under their uh, Homeland Security folks that work with Border Patrol. So there was also a, a white guy in a ball cap and a jacket that was kind of in the background. And they were both Homeland Security folks. The, the Mexican guy who was trying to um, portray himself as somebody who was seated there, um, you know, you could tell he didn't want to be photographed, but most importantly, uh, a Border Patrol agent and him were talking once um, you left that area. Now, uh, uh, you loved being a cop, didn't you? I enjoyed it, yes. Okay, and uh, you believed in your mission? Yes, and I took an oath to uphold it. Uh, and you took an oath to uphold the Constitution of the United States? Yes. All right, now what advice would you have um, uh, for people who are questioned by, by law enforcement. Uh, now, you know, you were a cop and but now you're an investigator. Uh, uh, what advice do you have? Well, even as a police officer, uh, you know, that's why we give people Miranda warnings. They have that right. And I will tell you that there's no police officer in the world who answer questions in an investigation that he was involved in right off the top. They always demand an attorney. Um, I always recommend that people talk to an attorney before speaking to a police officer. And now it's been upheld with the Supreme Court that even as a witness, you have the right to an attorney or you have the right to an attorney and speak with one prior to giving a voluntary statement as a witness to a crime. So it's a very important right. And I suggest that everybody utilize that. The most common term is I want a lawyer before I answer any questions. Do you think that uh, I use poor, uh judgment in, in any way uh, with my interaction with uh, the border agents? No, and that's proven by them not putting their hands on you, forcing you to the ground, or um, this becoming more escalated than it was. Um, they knew you were somebody, Robert, they just didn't know who, but they're not used to being questioned. And had you done anything other than what you did, you would have suffered a penal penalty of street justice, right. which is what police officers do. So your recommendation is uh, you have a Fifth Amendment right not to answer questions and uh, to exercise it. Every time you're stopped by law enforcement, because if you even tell them a lie, even if you misspeak, as they say, um, you will be charged with false information to a police officer. Why give them that opportunity? I'd rather just say, I have nothing to say. I want my attorney. All right, Jess, uh, you're like a brother to me. Right on, thank you.